Today's the day we take a look at the differences between Bamboo Labs PETG HF and Elegoo's Rapid PETG. And we're also going to include some PETG from AnyCubic. That is what I use to print my sander holders right now. So what makes Bamboo's PETG HF different from some of the competitors such as Elegoo? Well, Bamboo claims that PETG, normal PETG that is, has an uneven finish whenever the speed transitions from one layer to the next. Whereas the HF has a consistent finish at any speed, as you can see here in this result on their website. And over the course of my testing, what I've found is the High Flow Pet G from Bamboo performs a lot more like a PLA than it does a Pet G in terms of the texture and the overall feel of it. Compared to regular PETG, Bamboo claims that the high flow can print about 100 millimeters per second faster. They're also claiming it is stiffer than their PETG Basic, although it runs at about the same level of heat resistance at 69 degrees Celsius. And as usual, all of the Bamboo Lab filaments come with RFID for intelligent printing in their AMS machines. The printing speeds and bed temperatures are similar to regular PETG, 65 to 75 degrees Celsius with a nozzle temperature of around 260 degrees. And if we take a quick look over on Elegoo's website, we can see their Rapid PETG strikes the perfect balance between PLA and ABS, offering easy printing like PLA with an impact and tensile strength similar to ABS. Now, Elegoo recommends a heated bed temperature between 70 and 90 degrees Celsius, but around the same nozzle temperature of 230 to 260 degrees. The Rapid PETG shares similar properties to the Bamboo Labs HF when it comes to chemical and weather resistance. Now, I'm not an engineer, so I'm not going to get into this and pretend like I know Know what it means but what i can tell you is over here on the elegoo it looks like we have a slightly higher uh, bending strength and bending modulus than we do over here on the bamboo lab petg hf so take that for what it's worth now that we've gone over some of the specs let's get right into the results all right so on the left side here is elegoo's rapid petg and the right side is Bamboo's PETG HF. As far as the PETG HF goes, it is more of a matte finish. If we just take a look at the sides, you can see the Elegoo is far shinier than the HF is on the right. Both print just fine. I did have an issue on the torture toaster with the HF. As you can see, one of the sides broke off. I don't think that's really due to the strength of the PETG HF. More so, uh, it was just a little bit stuck in there and I forced it up. With this one I kind of guided it from the bottom side I was pushing up on these as I was pushing down just to prevent that from breaking again they both close up they are a little bit loose and the Elegoo's had a little bit of an issue with these clearance tests here the 0.4 and the 0.5 millimeter were too loose and then the 0.3 was just a little bit too tight but aside from that, everything worked just as it should or as you would expect. Overhangs came out basically the same. Now, again, this is a torture toaster. It's designed to put the printer to its limits. So these really aren't meant to come out good. But yeah, they both performed pretty much the same here. And you can see if we put them side by side. Maybe the Elegoo has a slight better performance as it goes up over here. And there was a layer shift on the uh, Pet GHF from Bamboo. And I believe we also got that with the Elegoo though. You can see right about here. And maybe you can see it a little better over there. There was just a slight layer shift. This one, you can see it a little bit more where the line is almost at the same spot. I printed both of these out on the Bamboo Lab A1 Mini, and both of them were dried for eight hours prior to printing. So I printed out a few different things to test out some of the print in place mechanisms. You can definitely see the shinier texture on the Elegoo over on the left side here. And that's pretty consistent with each of them. And one thing I did want to clarify here is both of these were printed using the exact same print profile. I did not change it based off of what the two filaments recommended. So this isn't shinier because it was printed at a hotter temperature. I basically printed this one, took out the filament, and then reran the file to print this one. And side by side, you can see the differences there. So if you're somebody like me who enjoys a more matte or satin sheen on your products, the Bamboo PETG HF is definitely the way to go if you're looking for PETG. Now, there is one thing that I wanted to try. I have not done it yet because I wanted to save it for this video, but that's a strength test. Now, 
I don't really have a good way of doing this. I'm not uh, an engineer. I don't have any testing mechanisms set up here in my, my print farm, but I'm simply going to try and snap it uh, just by twisting these. And you can see that was fairly easy. And these are printed at like 10% infill with uh, two walls, I believe. So that was uh, fairly easy to do. Let's see if we can do it this way without cutting ourselves. So that one doesn't break. Now let's do it with this one. It's pretty much broke in the same manner that the other one did, uh, albeit this one was a little bit harder to break. Yeah, again, not a scientific test. They both broke in almost the exact same way, but this one was a little bit harder to break. Uh, this is the Elegoo Rapid PETG. You can see that one kind of started to bend there before it broke. And I mean, there was a, a fair amount of force going into it. Not a whole lot. Again, it's not printed at a very high infill and it is plastic, but uh, that one kind of seems to have bent rather than just snapped right off. And if we do it with the bamboo PETG HF, similar results. In fact, almost the exact same result. There's elegoo and bamboo. Bamboo. Same as the first time. Here's elegoo. Yeah, that one's definitely harder to to break. You can see it wants to break in that same area there, but it is kind of bending more than it is snapping like the bamboo did. So obviously we can see kind of how the, the two perform very similar, but from this little unscientific test, the Elegoo is slightly stronger or slightly less prone to just snapping than this bamboo is. Speaking of that, let's see what it takes to just pull this apart. Not very much. And again, I printed these at like 10% infill with two, one or two walls. So this wasn't really meant to be a strength test. I printed these just for the differences between the sheens, but you got the snap in with it too. You can see it is kind of bending until it hits that snapping point. Let's do the same with the Elegoo. All right, and right off the bat, I can tell you this one snapped almost instantly. So maybe the Elegoo isn't stronger than the PETG HF. I think I pretty much pulled it in the same manner. Maybe I held it slightly different. I'll have to watch that back in the footage and you guys can uh, let me know I did it wrong in the comments down below. But definitely weaker and it even snapped up here towards the top there. Yeah, I'm not applying very much force at all. And yeah, that one is just kind of snapping there. Next thing I printed out were these little fidget cubes. You can take a guess. The Elegoos is on the left and Bamboos on the right. And let's see if we can get these in the orientation that they were printed at originally. There we go. So these were printed face down on the bed like this. You can see the sheen difference in them there with the black. And both of these perform pretty much the same. The one printed in the PTGHF is slightly looser. It's just easier to move around if I can figure out the orientation that this thing spins. You can see it's just a little bit uh, loose. This one is uh, slightly more stiff or put together. So these turned out almost exactly the same other than the sheen on them. They both perform pretty much the exact same way. I'm not gonna break these because, well, I play with these. The next thing I printed out was this little, little grabber here. And I did that just to test the print in place mechanisms uh, one more time on this PETG HF here. You can see the print. I'm not sure what that is. I think maybe there was some PLA or something left on the A1 Mini's print bed, but that seemed to happen with all of the prints. Layer lines look good. The claw performs just as it should. Pretty happy with how this one came out. Again, this is out of the bamboo PETG HF. I did not test it with the Elegoo. Hey folks, sorry for the interruption. I just wanted to jump in here real quick and say thank you for the amazing support I'm seeing down in the comments from most of you. We have seen a tremendous amount of growth on the channel over the last couple of months. YouTube tells me that over 65% of you aren't subscribed to the channel. So if you enjoy the content and you wanna see more of it, I'd really appreciate it if you smash that subscribe button. 
All right, let's get back to the PETG. And then to the final test that I did with this PETG HF here. Now, this is the normal sander holder that I sell out of any cubics green or lime green PETG. Now it's got very reflective, very shiny, glossy finish to it. Really durable. I mean, these ones, I cannot break them apart. I could snap them this way, of course, but they are designed to mount to a wall like this, and then the sander slots into them and can hang this way so you can slot it in there and pick it back out. So all of the force is really pulling back on these little lips here. So these are plenty strong enough. It's six or seven walls, uh, probably way overkill, but that is what I have found to work, and I'd rather it be more durable for my customers than have it break. With that said, I'm not a fan of the glossy sheen. If we take a look at the Festool sander that these were designed for, it's a more, well, the finish is more like this. And this is the lime green PETG HF from Bamboo. And this was printed out on the FL Sun S1 Pro. Full disclosure, FL Sun did send me over their machine for testing, but they're not paying me to say anything about the machine. I'm just getting to use it in my videos and give you my honest feedback on it. One of the things I noticed right off the bat with it is it does not retract like your typical bamboo machine would, where it seems to pull back and then it cuts the filament. It stops printing and then it raises from the point where it finished printing. So you can see here we ended up with a little blob. I've already cut it off but it was essentially a, a blob about three or four millimeters tall. It happens when it just stops printing and the filament oozes out onto it. I think that's something that can be fixed with some G-code and I mentioned it in my last video. So if you haven't seen that one, go check that out where we introduced the FL Sun S1 Pro. Nonetheless, you can see the differences here between the two filaments and this lime green from bamboo is actually more of the green color than this is. But I also wanted to test it out with the black. So this was printed out on the Bamboo Lab P1P using the exact same profiles as this one. You can see I had a few issues at first and that was of no fault of the filament or the profile. I simply had an error the night before and plugged in the fan the wrong way. The tool head fell off and when I plugged it back in, I plugged the connector in upside down so the fan was not turning on. You can see once we got the fan plugged in the right way, it was printing just fine, except this one had a little bit of a connection issue there. So I tweaked the fan settings and we ended up with this guy. Really durable uh, piece here. Uh, yeah, see, snaps over there in that corner. Uh, but that took a substantial amount of force for a PETG part to break. Now, if I try it with this guy, I don't know if I can do that again, but let's... Yeah, yeah that's not breaking. This isn't gonna snap. I might may, may deform it a little bit, uh, but at least my personal self, I cannot snap this piece. I'm gonna try it with this one. This is not printed out with the exact same amount of infill as this one, but we'll give it a go. Ah, so this one's separated here. Maybe it was already separated there. So I was able to get this one to break. Again, this one was uh, printed out on a different machine with different settings. And I just wanted to show you the color difference with this really. But these ones here are all printed out on the same machine. And let's see if we can break this one. I don't know. So possible the way I was holding it, I just ended up putting some pressure back there. But you know, I grip it just like this. It's giving it all my go. It's not breaking. Really durable filaments. I don't think there's a huge difference in terms of the strength between the Bamboo Lab and the Elegoo. I think more of it was probably due to the way that the file is designed. As we saw with these ones, while the Elegoo did break slightly easier, that could have been due to how I had my hands placed. If I had them placed like this in the first one and like this in the second one, I'm applying force in a different direction. So that could have impacted that as well. And I printed out one more item on the FL Sun S1 Pro yesterday. It was out of the bamboo lime green. You can see the quality on here is pretty good. There's a little bit of stringing there where the supports fell off as it was printing, but that machine is fairly quick. 
I think this printed out in about 20 minutes. So I'm not really complaining. As far as my preference between the two, am I going to continue using the Anycubic and Elegoo PETGs or am I going to switch to Bamboo Lab? To answer, I guess the overall question, yeah. I think I'm gonna start printing with Bamboo Labs Lime Green PETG HF for all of the sander holders going forward. That will allow me to have a consistent sheen across all of them and offer it in more than just the lime green. I'll be able to offer them in black for people who prefer that color. We can introduce a red for anybody who owns a 3M sander. We've got yellow in stock for anybody with the DeWalt's. And you can even head over to Bamboo Labs website to check out all the other ones they have to offer right now. I think I'm gonna try some of the sky blue next and probably add some orange for all of you rigid fans. And what's really cool on Bamboo's website, and I believe Polymaker does it as well, if you go on, you can click suggest a new color and pick from any of the available colors. As I mentioned before, we're also testing out the Adventure 5M Pro from Flashforge. Right now I'm using some ASA in color burnt titanium to print out a little uh, vacuum nozzle adapter. And if you watched my last video, I had mentioned uh, that there was some issues I was having with the FL Sun S1 Pro and with getting PETG to stick to the build plate. I know, lots about Pet G today. But uh, I reached out to my rep and they got back to me and said that my cooling settings may be too high for the uh, filament in there. So I changed them to their engineer's recommended settings and I was able to get a print done. Uh, I did have glue on the build plate, so bottom is a little bit messy, but that uh, substantially helped to get these PETG prints to stick. I also mentioned and I sent them a screenshot of my bed mesh that I showed in yesterday's video and they said I should take a look inside and make sure there's no debris around the magnet that's under the inductive bed. And they also wanted me to go inside of the printer here and make sure none of the belts, the nozzle, anything like that was loose. But I just wanted to give an update to let you know that I did hear back within about an hour from my rep over at FL Sun, and we were able to get a successful print with a little bit better adhesion. And print quality overall is pretty good. Just a few issues on top again. It's got that issue that I mentioned before with the blobbing right there that must have been where the print stopped and it just started raising up. So I think I need to reach back out and let them know about that as well. I might try to tweak the G-code myself and see if I can get it to, when it stops, have it retract before it lifts up because it seems like it is just stopping and then raising the print head up. And I do wanna say thank you again to Flash Forge and FL Sun for sending over some of their printers for me to try out. I'm having some fun. Uh, it is nice getting to use some of these other machines and that machine over there behind me, it's really, really quick. I really wanna get those uh, settings dialed in because I think it's going to be a phenomenal addition to my print farm and for prototyping here. If you enjoyed today's video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you hit that subscribe button down below, it would mean the world to me. I will see you all in the next video. Take care.